Hey guys, I'm Chance Sanders and I'm here with Black Scout Survival. We're going to talk about my personal EDC carry. So we're going to talk about our personal carry, EDC carry, as far as a bag goes and also what we wear as clothing and what we keep in our pockets or on our belts. All right, so here is one of my EDC bags. I use a variety of shoulder bags. This one happens to be a Hidden Woodsman Haversack. Um, I like this one, the gray color. It's, it's not very militaristic looking, and it's the perfect size for actually carrying on your body. One of the things that can happen is we can overload ourselves based off the size of a, of a bag that we're carrying. We tend to always fill it up, no matter how big it is. So with shoulder bags, because you're coming across just one shoulder, it's easy to overload and, and become something that you don't want to carry. So I, I like a size bag like this. Uh, some of the features of the bag itself is a small pocket in the back, a wide shoulder strap, detachable buckle. And the good thing about haversacks is it's, it's got a couple of zippers and compartments, but it's, it's pretty much a main pack pouches you can kind of throw everything into. Uh, there is some dividers in it and also it does have an orange interior that really helps you to find that stuff that's down in the bottom of your bag. So starting at the top and coming out I have a Israeli bandage. You'll notice in, as we go through this I'm, I'm pretty keen on first aid and buddy aid type of equipment to keep you alive. So got a compression bandage there, uh, rather a uh, Israeli bandage. This is just a small uh, Ziploc bag. It's got your basic first aid stuff in it, band-aids, medicines, uh, some quick clot and things of that nature. It's, you know, not, not hard to do. One of the other items that I keep in here is a, this is called an Arctic canteen cup. It's a US military. I like it because it's a lot narrower and easier to fit into a bag, but the handle does come out and it will function to boil water in, to cook your food in, and things of that nature. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Got some more first aid materials, a little, little first aid knife. Got some fire making tinder. Got an EpiPen. This is really important if you have any kind of allergies. Uh, this, this may save your life one day, especially out in the woods. Got a military issue beanie. Keep your head warm. It's very important to be able to keep your head warm. Got a flashlight. We got the Black Scout Survival flashlight in here. Got some cordage. Everybody knows what that's good for. This is a very small fishing kit that I built a few years back. Uh, this is actually a container for a, a drill bit, an end tool on a mill machine, and it comes open and I have all the components inside of it. And then I've got some spider wire fishing line wrapped around it. Makes for a, a very small package. And in, in my EDC kit, you know, am I gonna get a chance to fish? Maybe, maybe not, but it's such a small item that does a lot for me if I'm in a position to fish for food. I have a bunch of knives, um, so the knife I throw in here, it's going to be of a high quality steel, it's going to be a fixed blade of some sort, and it's going to be functional. So it doesn't have to be this particular one, which is a Chris Reeves uh, Sable, is the one that happens to be in there today. but. That really is dependent on my mood and what I want to toss in there, but they're going to have those, those qualities. I also normally carry a backup knife. This is a Mission Knives titanium knife. I like it because it's lightweight, it's titanium, and I can actually clip this on my body and have a spare fixed So next blade. up, we got a space blanket. These come in a variety of, of shapes and sizes. I normally like to carry a, a reusable space blanket. They tend to hold up better, but in any of this gear, any of your EDC stuff, is supposed to complement your skill level with what you can take from your environment and, and fill a lot of those holes. So it's not going to be a full backpack with all your camping gear. It's, it's just something that will aid you in your daily life and or in an emergency situation. So we got that. 
We've got a tourniquet. Tourniquets are important. Stop the bleeding. Next thing, we've got a signal mirror. You guys have all seen these before. It's a military issued signal mirror. And the good thing about signal mirrors, they are multi-useful. You can, you know, look at yourself if you need to, maybe spot something somewhere that you can't normally get to. And also for signaling. It's, uh, I do uh, carry a handgun most, most of the time. And so I'll keep some spare magazines. Today happens to be a star nine millimeter. Um, sometimes it's a Glock, sometimes it's a Walther. It just depends on what I feel. And my EDC will shift kind of, uh, kind of like a mission profile. Where am I gonna be? What am I gonna be doing? Will the weapons uh, be useful in that situation? So that kind of goes with everything. A folding saw. And I hate to tell you guys, but they don't make these anymore. So if you can find one, let me know. Uh, this is actually a Gerber uh, folding saw, but it works really, really well. And it's a, a lock, lock back type of a situation there. And it's small enough, big enough to be useful, but small enough to carry. I really like these things. Anytime I get an opportunity to find some, I will pick them up. What else do we have? Water purification. This is a kind of like kind of like a survival straw, same principle. Uh, this one actually will filter out chemicals, believe it or not, which is most something most of your survival straws do not deal with. So, got that one. And more on the lines of signaling, we have a daytime signal here. Obviously, another purpose for the space blanket is signaling. It is orange, and it is shiny, reflective on the side. You can make flags and things of that nature. For nighttime signaling, I have a set of pin flares. Uh, I got these for, I think, 25 bucks at Cabela's. You can look at Cabela's or uh, maybe Bass Pro Shop. Sometimes they'll, they'll carry these. And it's uh, got four flares in it, so that's a very useful piece of gear. I used to have a military-issued set of these, but somebody named Black Scout got a hold of them. So, Got some tincture of iodine. There's multiple uses for that. Hey, look, another knife. I like knives. Uh, this one happens to be a Winkler belt knife and very good knife. I really like it. Useful. Something you may not consider as a EDC piece of kit, but being able to protect your ears in a very noise uh, heavy environment is something that you might want to think about whether you're shooting or not. Just sometimes you may be in an area where the, the noise pollution is bad and you want to protect your ears. Uh, a simple sharp easy lap sharpening stone. Well, it's a sharpening rod, diamond rod. And if you need to, because of the way it's constructed, you could definitely use this as an impact weapon or even a, a, a puncture weapon. Another small flashlight, set of EMT shears. I actually had calls to use these a couple weeks back. I was a first responder on a, I'm not a first responder, but I happened to be there in a accident on I-20 and was there until the EMT arrived. And for whatever reason, he didn't have his shears and we used mine, so. Some more cordage. Fire starters. This is the Aurora Ferrocium rod. It's self-contained. It has the striker on the back of the little shroud here. These were designed for saltwater use because ferrocium and saltwater does not mix. It will corrode your ferrocium rod. So they made that one. So got that one. Set of lock picks. Anybody that's seen any of Black Scout's videos know that we we really like lock picks. What else we got? This is a match safe with a compass in the end of it. And I just keep some of the little tender quick tubes in there, or tender quick pouches in there to get a fire started. And that's about it for the, oh wait, 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 there's more. This, this is a ventilated operator kit. This is the pocket kit that you get from Tactical Response. It's got a tourniquet in it. It's got a compressed gauze, duct tape, uh, some, a syringe, and some 
gloves. Also got another ferrocetium rod. So with that, some of the things could I get rid of? I don't need that many fixed blade knives. I just, I really don't. Uh, one fixed blade would be enough, two is better. So three, is that a little bit overkill? Yeah, probably. Everything else I, I feel that is definitely needed for carrying. One of the things I do have also in here is some Aquamira tabs for, for water purification. So if you think about it, if you get access to water and you have the opportunity to boil it, you'd want to boil that water first. Anytime you can boil, you want to do that and save your other methods for maybe when you're on the move and you don't have time to stop and build a fire and boil the water. The straw you can use almost anywhere, but you're kind of stuck with water you can access with the straw. So use in conjunction, get your water with your container, then use your straw or vice versa. So there's that. All right, just in case you guys thought we were done, we're not. I'm gonna talk about real quick clothing and uh, pocket items. So my clothing, I tend to dress for the environment. You don't have to always wear tactical gear. You don't always have to wear camping gear, but your clothing should serve the purpose of keeping you warm and dry and in the summertime, keeping you cool as possible. So your clothing should reflect that. Uh, a shemag has a bunch of different uses. I don't always wear one, but today it's cold and I'm trying to keep my neck warm. Shoes, wear shoes that you can run in, that you can hike in, and that are appropriate for your environment. Uh, don't, you know, don't walk around in combat boots if, if the environment does not suit it for that. Pocket items, uh, another flashlight. This one happens to be the Tactician by Surefire. I keep a automatic knife. This is a Microtech large UDT. Switch over. This is a Spartan Severtech. It's another automatic. One thing to be concerned with on automatics, and it, you know, little PSA for you. Sometimes if you push the button, that thing doesn't open, you need to change out your springs or store it away and get you a fixed blade because the last thing you wanna use in a self-defense scenario is a knife that when you push the button does not open. So keep that in mind. I usually carry a couple lighters with me, a couple of big lighters and some litter and that's about it. So pocket carry, not that much. The bag allows me to, to take the load off and put it somewhere, pick it up, put it in the vehicle. We can kind of go overboard with our survival gear, I know that. What I like to do is have an EDC that if I get into a vehicle and I have maybe some water, another coat and a sleeping bag, I've got a go kit for my car. I don't have to have replicas of everything everywhere I go. This will complement and take care of the basic needs and then I can plus up that with a bigger pack or a vehicle. Thanks for watching the video guys and post the comments and we'll be sure to talk to you, thanks.